Hey everybody and welcome to Dominion Cards, the video series where we take a strategic, in-depth look at various cards from the board game Dominion. Today we're looking at Venture. This is a 5 cost treasure card from Prosperity and it says plus one coin, reveal cards from your deck until you reveal a treasure, discard the other cards, play that treasure. So Venture hunts through your deck in order to find more treasures to play. It's also a treasure itself, so that means Venture is capable of chaining if you have multiple copies of it. And if you have no treasures left in your deck, or you've drawn all of your cards, then it was basically a copper, but you paid five for it, which is obviously pretty terrible. Now, the theory of Venture is that it's trying to offer you some sort of consistency in a deck that would otherwise be pretty inconsistent by pushing past unplayable junk cards and finding higher quality treasures so you can reach higher price points despite the fact that you've got a low hand size. In practice, however, this doesn't really work out for this card. So, because you still need to have treasures left in your draw pile, or essentially your discard and, you know, you reshuffle, Venture only works in decks that basically don't have good draw. If you have good draw, Venture won't hit anything, so you're never going to buy it. Now the problem is, is that these sorts of decks don't really benefit very much from trashing coppers, so that means Venture is going to be highly likely to basically find a copper. And it should be clear that if you want to make the most out of Venture, you need to have most of your treasures be good, or at the very least have a high number of Ventures so you can get a lot of chains before like stopping on a copper or something. The problem is, is that getting to either of these states is pretty difficult and really slow because you're either going to need to trash your coppers or you're also going to need to gain a lot of good treasures and of course you also need to take time out to get ventures as well and the problem is is that venture costs five it's it's very very expensive for what it's giving you which to be honest isn't really very much um, it's hard to amass a lot of copies of cards that cost five and there's a lot of other better treasures that are going to cost five, or possibly even less than five, that you might even get more use of than Venture. And if your Venture hits a copper, then it's a little bit better than a silver because it cycles you through a card. You know, you don't draw the copper next turn um, and it might push you past some junk cards. But it's very, very significantly more expensive than silver. The reality is you don't really want to be buying silver when you've got five coins right that's very very inefficient um, so just having something that's a little bit better than silver is just simply not good enough for its cost now sure you know you could buy a venture to try and skip past all of those useless non-treasures like decks you've got a lot of victory cards you curses or ruins and you just try and push past them and basically just buy a load of treasures. The uh, problem is, is that these sorts of decks, this is sort of what we would call a slog deck, where you're basically just expecting the deck to be full of junk and a couple of treasures. Um, usually these decks are too busy basically buying points, which is sort of how they get into that state in the first place. That means you don't really have a lot of time to amass a lot of ventures, especially because they cost five. Well, if you think about something like a duchy duke deck, you know, it wants to just amass a load of points, but every time you hit five, you probably want the Duke or the Duchy instead. So when are you going to buy the Ventures? And of course, for these sorts of decks, trashing coppers is bad because the coppers are all right in the sense that they're still doing something useful for you and your deck is hugely bloated anyway. So you lose too much tempo by trashing the coppers early and not getting to use them. And also, you're happy to have a bloated deck because it means you see the particular point cards that you're buying less often. So you don't normally tend to be trashing coppers very much in that kind of deck. Now, it's worth noting that Venture forces you to play the card that it finds. Sometimes this actually might be bad. So, for example, the Heirloom Cursed Gold is a treasure card that you probably don't even want to play all that often. And so if you've got a card like that, then Venture, maybe you want to watch out if you haven't drawn it yet. You might be forced to basically gain a curse when you play it. You also got to watch out for Venture for play order. It can be tempting to play all your Ventures first to see what you get. 
But this might be bad sometimes. For example, you might have a bank um, and you really want to venture to find your bank's last or fortune, for example. Um, there are more examples, but that's just the most common case. It's not always going to be the case. A lot of the time it doesn't really matter. But very occasionally you get cases where you do want to um, either play or not play the other cards in your hand first. Now, just a couple of niche uses for Venture that we're going to talk about. So one of them is fairly unique to Venture, although it's not really all that good, I would say. Um, very occasionally, you might gain treasures before you actually buy any cards in your buy phase. So even if you draw your entire deck, you might find there are situations where you're now not allowed to play any more action cards and you gain a treasure and then you know you don't have a chance to play it. Well, Venture can do that. So, for example, Treasure Trove, when you play it, um, it will gain you a gold and a copper. And if you have a Venture in your hand, you might be able to hit that gold and play it straight away. Um, you might top deck the copper, though, so watch out. Um, That's what I mean by very niche. You know, is that good? Probably not. You had to spend five in a Venture. But it can do that, that not many other things can. Um, similarly, Swashbuckler can get you this treasure chest artifact as soon as you start your buy phase you gain a gold, and so Venture has a chance to play that gold straight away instead of having to wait another turn. Now, for both of these cases, was this better than Venture just being a gold itself? Um, it's not really offering that much. It gives you an extra coin, you know, so if you had six, maybe you wouldn't do it. Um, you know, this is not much benefit, but I'm really reaching to find reasons that you might want Venture um, and the usual combo card that we talk about a lot, capitalism, is also worth noting with Venture because what treasures do changes a lot sometimes when capitalism is around. And what this means is that Venture's role changes and that it's more like a cantrip coin, like Peddler or a Merchant or something, you know. Um, you get to find and play action cards that do things like drawing and trashing and so on. But, you know, even in this sort of situation... Adventures acting like a cantrip coin, as I've explained in like the treasury video and the market video, you don't really normally want to be buying a cantrip coin for five because, again, it's just a very competitive price point. There's a lot of good cards there, and it's just a slow way to build your deck if you're just spending huge amounts of money on this card that's only doing a little bit more for you. So all of this sort of raises kind of the main point that Venture is very, very weak. It's in the bottom 10% of all Kingdom cards. Uh, sort of the main problem is that it's massively overpriced. Um, you don't really get very much for paying five, and uh, that's just death knell of certain cards. In fact, when you look at like a lot of the worst cards in Dominion, it's usually price problems for what they give you. Um, so obviously, bottom of the heap are those two potion cards, Philosopher's Stone and Transmute, that just cannot overcome the price tag, really. Um, but then you see there's a lot of five-cost cards. And the reality is, is that if you cost five and you're not good enough, then uh, you're just terrible as a card, really. It really sets a card back quite a lot um, because five is meant to be reserved for the really, really good cards. And Venture just isn't a really, really good card. It struggles to find a place in many many decks and even the ones where you think okay maybe this would be good under certain conditions you find there's something about that deck where you struggle with it so like as i said that if you've got like a sloggy deck full of junk the problem is is when do you even buy the venture right the price is a problem in that case and in many of these situations it might not even give you more value than just like buying a silver because it will hit a copper and well silver costs three instead of five so yeah, so Adventure's just terrible, unfortunately. Uh, not a very good card at all. Um, and that's sort of it, really, that I have for Venture. So what we're going to do now is head over to the online client, generate some kingdoms with the Venture in it, and we'll see how good it is. And I expect the answer's going to be not good at all. So here we have Gardens and Duke as victory cards. Um, is there an engine at all? Well, there's Lookout for Thinning, there's Festival as a Village... We've got Laboratory, Rabble, and Torture as draw cards. Torturer, excuse me. Um, well, Festival, Terminal Draw. I mean, it's okay. We can get thin. We can buy Festivals. We can draw with 
torturer, and then there's rabble as well. Um, the rabble attack probably not that awful. Um, if you put stuff like estates and curses on top of the deck, look out can trash them. It is interesting though that when someone puts curses in their hand with torturer, they actually can't trash it there and then because of lookout. So I think torture is really important. If you can torture someone to death here, they really, really struggle. And what's the alternative? Well, for money-wise, there's like Explorer, but the engine can use that as well. You know, can someone do a Harem Duke deck, for example? Um, well, that sounds really bad, but... I don't think it would work under an onslaught of torturers, to be honest. Um, I think, and Rabble would actually be pretty nasty against you as well if you were trying to do either of the slogs with like Gardens or Duke. So I think you have to go for the engine. And Venture just has no place in that engine at all. Um, even Explorer that gains a card gains it to your hand, so you can't even, like, you know, if you didn't get a chance to draw it afterwards. Like you can't even play adventure. So I think Venture's terrible here. Um, there are hints that there might be a sloggy thing going on, but it wouldn't work in that sort of deck anyway, I don't think. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think that's a no for Venture. You just want Festival's Torturers, really, and then you can get an Explorer to like gain some golds or something. Sounds a lot better. What have we got here? So we have Masquerade to Trash, and that's a pretty good card. Uh, we have attacks in the form of Ghost Ship and Familiar, but there is also a moat as well. Um, so there's no village, which is a big deal. That means we're probably not going to be able to do anything with Outpost. Um, mine feels pretty bad as well. Smugglers doesn't feel that good in the event that um, there's no engine. So I guess it's just Masquerade money, is it? Hmm, that's interesting. Does Venture actually work okay in Masquerade money? Because here's the thing. If we hit five, what do we actually want? I would rather just get like two Masquerades and play them all the time. I don't think it's worth going for Familiar. I will just pass you the Curses with Masquerade and like I'll be trashed very well. At that point, I basically just want to be buying Treasures. And ironically, this is sort of a big money deck where I actually am going to be trashing my Coppers. Like Masquerade money is still decent um so it might well be that if i hit five i do actually buy venture in this kingdom like because there's literally nothing else to do right it's just well is it just masquerade money i mean do you want a ghost ship probably um I say I have two masquerades but i might add a ghost ship as well but then at that point i think venture is fine and Venture actually all right if you get Ghost Shipped, maybe. You could top deck like two junk cards and then skip past them with Venture. You could, um, well, I guess you might be forced to set something up with Venture, which is not quite as exciting, but it gets off the top of your deck. So, huh, uh, this is a board where I might actually consider Venture, but I'm still somewhat sad about it. I'm definitely buying gold on six instead of venture, but if I only hit five, I could pick it up as a booby prize for the fact that I can't get gold. But yeah, this deck is literally just buying the basic treasures otherwise. So you'll notice there's literally nothing to do. And on those boards, the weak cards come into their own, right? You might even consider a harbinger at some point. Um, yeah, so, huh. What do you know? We did end up with a venture kingdom in the end, but a very, very weak board, and that is why we considered venture. Now, this is looking explosive. We have chapel for trashing, which is very, very strong. We have um, draw with courtyard and city and nobles. We have villages with workers village and village and nobles. So already very good engine, chapel, draw, villages. We've got Market for plus Buy and Workers Village and potentially City as well. We have Quarry to make actions insanely cheap. So Nobles is really good to pick up. Um, there's absolutely nothing that Venture is doing in this kingdom. We are chapeling down, buying quarries, and then absolutely going to town with like Markets, piling out piles, grabbing cities, um, going crazy. Maybe we get some Nobles 
you know, if you played like three quarries, everything is free. So you just want to be playing as many markets and workers' villages as you can for mass buys to buy like all of the markets and cities and nobles. And the game just ends really fast. There is Platinum Colony. Um, it probably doesn't matter that much because the game is over too quickly. Uh, you're not even going to consider venture at all here. It's like the it and seller, probably the only cards you basically don't care about. Um, in fact, we don't even need draw, right? Because you can just have cantrips and to find like three quarries or even just two probably is all you need and your chapels, like three stop cards and then everything else is like cantrip with market, city, workers, village, village. Um, yeah, so probably don't bother with courtyard as well. So venture, no chance on this board. Absolutely none at all. That board ends very quickly as well, interestingly. Okay, what have we got here? We have Ghost Ship, but there's also Lighthouse. So maybe getting a Ghost Ship doesn't matter. I think it for its presence forces you to Lighthouse every turn. We've got Lurker and King's Court. So we can get King's Courts really easily. So what do we want a King? Well, we've got Laboratories, and that's pretty good. Um, there is no plus buy, which is a huge shame here. We have Explorer to gain payload. Um, it's a colony platinum board, by the way. So we want to get to a state where we're buying a colony every turn. We can King Lurker to gain whenever we want more King's Courts. But the problem with this deck is that you can draw and then what? Right? Like there's Vineyard, but you have to buy a potion. There's no other way to get it. And then your one buy per turn is spent on Vineyard. Doesn't feel very good. I guess with King's Court Lurker, you can amass a bunch of cards, but it still doesn't feel very good. So... Of course, there's no trashing, I just noticed. I hadn't considered that. That actually means the King's Court laboratory thing. How good is it? You've got a whole load of junk cards you've got to push past. Um, hmm. Okay, that's actually pretty tricky. So theoretically, there's a great engine here, but you actually struggle to get it going sometimes. Like the draw is not very good. It's laboratory. And while King's Court is good, you've got all your starting junk cards. So I guess what you actually want is a deck uh, that is sort of able to get stuff reasonably. I guess the only thing is, is that you've got no plus buy. The only other way to gain more than one card per turn is either Lurker or Explorer. And you don't really want either of them. Um, maybe it's actually just... I want to say Ghost Ship, big money. Um, and you just force your opponent to buy a load of lighthouses which are kind of crap um, and you go for the ghost ships anyway like maybe you don't bother with king's court because how do you generate a deck that can consistently pair up king's court with something good i mean maybe you just buy a load of labs and then you buy some king's courts and you uh you do do you do go for lighthouses and you just hope to draw your lighthouse every turn maybe you have to do that instead to prevent go ship from wrecking you but you're also at a worry of when do you get the king's court well then you're like well okay you think about the lurker but then that just makes it harder to draw everything although you know king's court in a lab is pretty good let's be honest you can even have some ghost ships and you're hoping to get the um village effect maybe you have pearl diver maybe you have poacher um if you are able to draw, it doesn't take that much, especially with two lighthouses, to get up to Colony. You only need two more money from somewhere, which could be two poachers, I guess. Um, anyway, all of this is irrelevant because Venture's never really got a place here, I think, no matter what we do. There is, of course, the whole ghost ship into like Venture stuff, but it's not actually very good. Um, I think Venture's ignored, no matter what. I don't know how worthwhile it is. I think because there's Colony Platinum... Maybe you can get away with doing the King's Court lab stuff um, and just try to draw through your junk. Um, yeah, but I, I guess that's all we're doing. Otherwise, it's just a money thing where you try and get a bunch of Platinums and then slowly go for Colony. But you're at risk of being go shipped to death. So I think you have to try the village thing no matter what. Get Pearl Divers and Poachers so um, and a bunch of ghost ships and labs. Try and draw. So yeah. Sort of a drawing engine, so Venture is no good. 
Okay, let's take a look at the last one. So there is no trashing at all. We do have mining village, workers village and city as villages. Draw card, we've got council room and moat and apothecary, I guess. Uh, there's transmute, which is laughable here. Um, why would you ever bother with it? Mm. We have contraband, which I can't imagine us ever using here. Uh, we've got quarry, which is very good. You've got plus buys of workers, village, council room, quarry. Yeah, you can you can actually get a lot of council rooms. Interesting, what you could do is get a load of villages, like workers, villages, and council rooms, and just draw a lot and accept the fact that you're going to be drawing your opponent a lot of cards, and you just don't care. Um, the fact that there is no trashing except for transmute is a big problem, though. Um... Yeah, that's sort of nasty. For that reason, Apothecary it might be good, but you have to buy the potion. And I would rather open with Quarry. And you see, I don't really want to be adding that many treasures. You could buy a single Platinum, but... Hmm, by having, like, two Quarries as well. But, like, Quarry's the stock card, you don't really want it. Hmm, what else do you open with then? Um, quarry moat and just accept that you're going to have a load of villages, a load of moats. Like with works villages, you can actually buy a load of moats and you can get a lot of villages, especially with quarry, right? Quarry workers village, you can mass purchase workers villages and moats um, and then cities. And maybe you don't need that many council rooms in hindsight. So I guess that's it. Maybe I don't know if I'd ever bother with Apothecary. I don't know when I'd get it. I don't know how useful it really is. I guess it's all right, uh, especially if you're using a lot of moats for draw. Um, it would be nice to have it, but at the same time, I really want like the workers' villages with the quarries. But maybe it's hard to get to the quarries and a load of workers' villages without Apothecary support. So maybe we do go for that, but I don't think I open it because I don't, I don't care about hitting the high price points. Anyway, Venture doesn't feel very good here again. Um, it just sort of gets in the way and yeah it's just bad really we were expecting to draw our whole deck so why do we bother with Venture anyway so there you go that was five kingdoms we found one where Venture might actually be decent but it was like absolutely terribly weak kingdom it was the masquerade money one wasn't it yeah um, that's just par for the course of Venture you very rarely buy it it's just rubbish unfortunately anyway I hope this was useful for you thank you for watching and I will see you next time goodbye